Good morning, everyone. It's the second Sunday after Trinity, which is the 21st of June. Today, we are thinking about the theme of justice. I'm in church and outside the, the St Cuthbert window here at the back of St Mark's Church, as, we, as I offer my, my talk for today. Um, The reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 21. It's the continuing story of Abraham and Sarah and the birth of their son, Isaac. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son, Isaac. So she said to Abraham, cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named after you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of wine, skin of water, and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, along with the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water of the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes, and she said, she went and sat down opposite opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bowshot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of my child. As she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of your boy where he is. Come, Lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin of water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. Today is, uh, the other thing about today is the story, it's actually Father's Day. I don't know about you, but I, I have, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have good memories of my dad and, and, uh, and continue to do so. I saw him this week, I was able to go and see him in his care home for the first time in four, nearly four months. So it's lovely to see him, really special this week. And, uh, and we always joke, my dad was a bit of a sort of... Uh, quite a funny dad, really, in many ways. And he, I remember there was one story of my dad was when we were in a, in a supermarket, my mum had given my dad the responsibility of me while my brother and my sister were, were with my mum. And they split off and did different jobs. After about half an hour, my mum stumbled across me wandering around the store on my own. I think she said I was about three at the time. And she sort of said, There's Michael, Michael. And he said, Have you seen my daddy? I said... And my mum told this story for years and years. We're not quite sure, still to this day, what my dad was doing. But there you go. I'm sure he was having a nice time somewhere. The decisions of dads are always hard to, to get, you know, it's always hard. And I'm a dad myself, and it's, always, it's not always easy, the, the decisions you have to make. Um, and our story today, Abraham has become a father again to Isaac. And he's faced with a difficult moral decision what does he do? I mean, the birth of Isaac was, as we've seen in the last three weeks, it's a very special gift to Abraham. Three weeks ago, we, we saw and we talked about the Trinity. Now, two weeks ago, we talked about the Trinity and how, how those three visitors, the three angels who visit Abraham in his tent at the Oaks of Mamre, are the ones who, who bring God into Abraham's life, who who present the truth and reveal the good news that he will be a father to Isaac. Last week we we talked about um, the the whole the place of good news. We talked about how how Isaac um, through 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 that story receives, brings good news into the family and how how the living giving of life and and allowing God into your life changes your life for good news. And we talked about the idea of laughter. And 
But today we see this child who is born now, we see a child who instead of bringing laughter and joy to her family, we discover brings instead jealousy and bitterness and fear. The jealousy of Sarah and Hagar between those two has been building up for some time since the birth of Ishmael. So Hagar, the slave woman of Abraham, gives birth to Ishmael. And Sarah, at this point, becomes jealous of her slave girl. And when Isaac is born, we see this jealousy develops into fear. And so Sarah uses power, and she misuses the power that she has to cast out this child and cast out this woman from her life. It's a harrowing story, and a story that we've seen played out in generation after generation throughout human history, where those with power and influence um, can remove those who are, who are difficult, remove those who, are, uh, who they don't want to have around them, use their power and a misuse of power to, to change their own lives. But in fact, what we see, it produces in, injustice, intolerance and poverty. Abraham is struck with a moral dilemma. What does he do? But he sticks, he's corrupted by his wife and he sticks with her. And then we see in the story of Hagar and Ishmael a harrowing story of, 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 of poverty as they're set out into the wilderness. There they are left to die. It's interesting for me, there's two interesting things about this story. First of all, that I, Ishmael no longer has a name. It's really interesting. He no longer has a name. And this is so common, isn't it, when we think about those who are oppressed, they no longer have a name, they no longer have a human identity, but are regarded as a number or, a, or as, as a problem. You know, we see in our situation where black lives matter, people recognise the colour of a face rather than the name of a person. And this is the really important thing about this story. We see oppression in this story. It's a story of sorrow. And we see the heartache. The other thing we see is the heartache of Hagar and how she, her heart breaks to see the circumstance of this situation. I think there are two things to learn. That whilst Abraham and Sarah reject this child and Hagar, God does not. God does not reject this child, but in fact names the child and continues to know the name of Ishmael. Even though he's not named in this part of the story, later we Ish Ishmael returns and we hear how he names his children and his family are precious in the story of God. This is an important lesson that God loves each one of us, no matter who we are, no matter what colour or creed, no matter what for how fortunate we are, what, whether we have wealth or poverty, God loves each one. We live in a world where so often that message is not heard. But the, the Bible is clear. We are all of value. All are precious in the eyes of God. Our Gospel reading today was words of Jesus. And, and the words of Jesus is the second thing I want to bring to us. What Jesus said in the Gospel reading today is, I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. I've always struggled with those words of Jesus. This is the Prince of Peace, the one who comes to bring peace and reconciliation to our world. We see in the words of Jesus how he says, I've not come to bring peace, but I've come to bring a sword. I believe the words of Jesus at this point are speaking directly to us in our circumstance today, that we must not stand idly by, ignoring the plight of those who are oppressed. Hagar's story is a story of oppression. It is a story of injustice. And today we are also faced with those same realities in our world. Jesus speaks to us and tells us and calls us to speak out, not to be passive, but to be makers of peace. We have come to, not to bring peace, but a sword. In other words, we have come to bring the sword of righteousness into our world. We are called to fight for justice and to speak out. Today, as we hear this story afresh and renew our sense of injustice that is around our world today, let us not be afraid of standing and affirming our call to justice, peace and equality for all. 
And may we all make our voice heard and remind our world that black lives matter, all lives matter, because we are all precious children of God. Amen.